I love coffee. And that's why I wanted to paint my mocha pot, which is now gently brewing here for a nice delicious cup of espresso. I had a lot of fun in painting it, and I hope you learned something from this video as well, whether you're a coffee lover or not. Let's have a look how we make this metallic shine, how we can create the illusion of depth, and how we can play around with lost edges. Let's get to it! Before I start painting, I always like to have a basic palette ready. In this case, I started out with four colors and white, so basically five. We have from left to right, we have ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, cadmium yellow medium, and titanium white. I'm just starting by mixing some basic colors, which I which I feel will be useful throughout the entire piece. So the main colors. And with that basic palette established, it's time to start blocking in. As you can see, the colors we have here are mostly browns, a bit grayish and a bit blue. And of course, on the lighter side, we have some yellows. Because we have a yellow environment, so the metal will also show off some yellows of the environment. The drawing, which you see in white, was done with a Faber Pitt pastel pencil, which is basically an oil-based pencil which doesn't uh, smear out or leave any traces in the paint. And so you have a crisp paint which doesn't get muddy. And I used the grid method to put it on my panel. That means I drew it uh, compared to a picture which also had a grid overlay on it. Please let me know if you'd like to see a separate video on how to transfer your sketch onto your painting. And then the ground color of the panel is basically a very light acrylic wash in burnt sienna just to get all the whites away. And I find that a very nice base to start from. Let's speed this blocking in up a bit. When blocking in, I like to go all over the painting. I like to put in some tones on the background as well, because I, I like to build my painting up as a whole. And it also helps me to make it a uniform piece. As we have this wonderful reflective surface, we also want to blend a bit of the background in there. Play around with lost edges. We'll get to that in a bit. But now, I, I switch to a smaller brush, where I start to do some more detailing. Yeah, like we have this shadowy part here, which is quite crisp. And for that, I like to use this smaller brush. As there's already a lot of colors on my palette and on the painting itself, it's easier to, again, work your way all over the place to establish the tones and values what you see. It helps to have already all your colors spread out and a general indication. It helps you put the colors where you want them to, to refine, to define. But I always like to say, don't overdo it. Try to keep it simple. Try to paint with a limited amount of colors on your palette and try to use colors which you can use to Mix all the colors that you want to have present in your painting. Now this mocha pot, it's metallic, but it's not brightly shining. It's a bit muted. So also when I'm making reflections on there, I need to ensure that they're not too crisp, not too sharp. And that's what you see also here in, for example, the top part where you see the reflection of the tip. These mocha pots, they have a vent and, you know, it's a circular shape. It can be quite daunting, quite uh, difficult to, to draw in your mind, but just try to see it the bigger picture. Try to see it as a loose shape and just impressions of it. You don't need to draw every line as detailed as possible. Just focus on the darks and the lights and you can get a very convincing achievement. 
Until now, there's quite some lost edges between the background and the object itself. So I'm deciding to lighten up the yellows on the object itself, making it pop more, giving it that shine to it, and letting it stand out a bit more from the background. I think it works out pretty well like that. Yet I do keep spaces where you have these lost edges, because I just love to play around with that. And it creates the illusion of depth. Now, these mocha pots, they are quite extensive in use, right? They, you put them on a fire, it's metal, it, it goes in dishwashers perhaps even, you clank it everywhere. So it needs to be also a bit rough. And you can easily create that feeling just by moving your brush quite rapidly with small, little, long strokes. And then you get this variety of brushwork and with metal you can create this beautiful illusion that is actually convincing metal. Play around with some lighter tones, darker tones, a lighter brush stroke, a darker brush stroke, a harder brush stroke, a softer brush stroke. Play around with it. But also do not forget to let your underground show through a bit because that also even gives more depth to your piece. Please know that the blacks you see are not black from a tube. That's really just the ultramarine blue mixed with the burnt shanna. That gives a very dark, dark, dark color. It's not black, well, it's a near black, uh, but it has a warmth to it as well. Or a certain coldness, depending on how your mixture is. If you use more of the brown color, or red, then it gets more warm. If you use more of the blue, it gets more cool. And for the coffee, I think it works out well, because if you smear it out thinly, you get a bit of a, you know, a, a, a brownish uh, wash. But if you put it on thicker, it's really black. And that's perfect for getting those coffee colors in there, but also perfect for getting these uh, black plastic parts on the mocha pot itself. As I mentioned, we want to show scratches on this metal. And here you see me just moving the brush. Basically, it's it's dancing. It's dancing on there. And that creates the illusion of the metallic uh, shine. And really, this is one of the most fun parts to do. Because that's where you see your painting really come alive. These small little details, but without going too detailed, if you get what I'm saying. And the same goes here for the vent. Remember, we wanted to keep it simple for that vent to really let it come alive. I just take my palette knife, and a very small amount of paint on there, just dapple it on there, and then dapple it twice for the second ring, and then you have your vent. It's as easy as that, sometimes at least.
Now, a lot of detailing has already been done. And I still miss the kick. So what I'm doing is just adding some darker lines over the shadowy areas to make those really pop. And also add again to the depth. So for getting that depth in there, we have the shadow play. We have soft edges in the background. We have highlights, the things which are more close to us. And if you look closely in the background, just behind my hand, basically, you see that the background is almost in the same tone as the upper part of the uh, of the lid. And that makes it really fall back. Yet you can still define the shapes because of all the shapes that we do see. You can still define the object and how it works. And I think that's marvelous when you can leave that part into imagination. Yeah, that your brain can really see clear lines even though they are not there. Let's speed the video up a bit again. Because this is the last stretch. We're just fine-tuning, detailing, um, blending parts where I think I need to blend it a bit more, adding more prominent brush strokes to where I think that's also needed, but also mainly adding really the brightest highlights in the coffee, in the reflections, because that's what really makes it pop alive, those reflections, as you can see. And as for signing, I work with, well, with wet paints, so I can scratch out my name in there, in a spot which is not too prominent, preferably in one of the corners I like to do it, but it really depends, per piece. But I'm very happy with the result of this one. I do love a good coffee, and I do love painting, and I hope this video taught you a bit. And if that's the case, please give a thumbs up and be sure to leave a comment if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. And if there's any certain topics you'd like to have explained, let me know. I'll be happy to look into that. For now, happy painting!